Hi guys, this is Julia from Just One More Card and I'm back with another video for stamping Bella. And today I want to show you how you can create a quick watercolor effect using different techniques. I'm going to be using the beautiful tiny towny garden girl water lily and you know I'm just I'm just a fan of water lilies that's why I wanted to use that image and I'm stamping it onto watercolor paper I'm using my favorite things licorice hybrid ink which works well with watercolors copics and other mediums and for the fur and for the main part of the coloring I'm going to be using my stabilo water based markers they're basically the same as distress markers or your zig clean color markers etc the nice effect here is, for I'm going to demonstrate this, I'm going to put down a darker color and then I can blend towards a lighter color by simply going over it with a lighter color. And then I can scribble off my marker and you can see that it goes from dark, where it picked up the darker color, to its natural color, you know, if you just scribble it off. So basically what I'm going for is blending towards a lighter color by simply using different markers. And I think this will work with your... Oh, before I continue, I'm also using these blend pens. One is from Stampin' Up, one is from Dove. I think there's also a blender pen from Tombow. So don't get hung up on specific brands. Um, multiple different brands will work here for you. So basically what I'm doing is I'm blending from one color to the other. So instead of like mixing, you know, different watercolors together and uh, using water to, you know, create different uh, intensities of the colors, I'm just doing all of this with markers. And then I'm coming in with my blender pen here and I'm just blending everything together and blending it out. And once it dries, it will look really, really pretty. And to me, this is just a very easy and un uncomplicated way to do blending. Because, you know, if you do like, I'm, I'm making quotation marks in the air here. If you do like real watercolors, then it's usually, you know, you have to mix the, the color that you need. You have to make sure that uh, you have the correct amount of water to dilute it and everything. And this is just a very easy way to quickly go from one color to the next because these water-based markers, again, Stabilo markers, Distress markers, Zig Clean color markers, Tombow markers, whatever you have, um, I think on watercolor paper, they can all be blended together quite nicely. And I'm really going for a more um, uh, artistic look and not for a perfect smooth blend. That is completely, I mean, that's not because I don't want to do it. It's just um, something that I was looking for in this particular image. Um, I like both styles, but for today, I just wanted to go with a more artistic blend and not worry too much about getting a perfect blend. Um, Again, this is completely up to you if you want to replicate this technique. Just do whatever feels best to you because this is a hobby that you do for fun, so you can have fun. Um, so it's important to do whatever you like best and not what, you know, um, uh, like somebody else tells you to do. This is not school, basically. I always keep reminding myself, this isn't school. I'm doing this for myself, not to get a good grade. <laughs> now here on the um, actual is it the water lily pad? Well, the green part of it, basically. You can see how I'm blending from a very dark, almost bluish green towards a very light green and how easy it is to blend with these markers, just to blend them into each other. And I'm leaving a little bit of white space here to create the illusion of highlights so that it really looks as if this leaf is folded. You know, it goes up and down. It has valleys and it has like hilltops basically I don't want to say mountains hilltops and you might say oh Julia that doesn't really look that pretty it's not blended that nicely you know what don't panic uh, if you are you want more of a smoothly blended look I will show you how to do that as well but for me this is like the first step I'm just gonna get the color down quickly I'm going to get the blending done quickly very very easily and I can worry about the details later so for example right now I grab the brush and it's not wet, it's just dump and I'm damp, sorry, not dump, <laughs> it's damp. And I'm just going over the colors here. And because they are watercolors and it's watercolor paper, they're going to immediately react to the water. You can see here that I can very easily move them around. I'm cleaning off my brush each time to make sure that um, I'm not transporting too much of the darker color into the highlights. And then I can very easily just blend this out and make the blend so much more smoother. Um, so if you're not satisfied with the blending that you get with pens only, just use some water on top of it and it's going to be absolutely smooth. You can see I'm doing this down here as well. Blending it out, 
grabbing a little bit of water and then smoothing this out. And you can get a very nice and smooth blend that way. It's just fascinating how well these colors react with water. It's just, oh, it's just magical every single time. You can see how I'm blending this out. And I'm going to use the same technique on each of these petals. So what I'm doing first, I'm co coming in with my darkest color. I'm coming in with my mid color. And then I'm going to blend towards my lightest color. And I'm going to come in with the brush and just activate, basically first activate the lightest color and then, <coughs> excuse me, clean my brush, touch upon the darker color and pull it up just a tiny little bit because I want to make sure that I have a really nice blend from dark to light. So you can see here, first I do the blending with the pens, coming in with the brush just pulling out the water a little bit and always cleaning off my brush to make sure that I don't have too much color. And I'm leaving that white highlight at the bottom of each panel petal intentionally because I will be coloring in that later. But this also helps me to color the, the adjacent petals immediately because otherwise I would have to wait. Otherwise the color would run into each other. The colors would run into each other. You can see here I'm doing this same technique for every petal. Darker color, mid-tone color, then coming in with the lightest color to blend, coming in with the brush and just pulling that color out and that's it and leaving that highlight area. It's, it's kind of meditative because once you've got your, your, your rhythm down and you know what to do, you just do the same on every petal and it's very nice to relax your mind because you really don't have to think about anything. You just, you know, you just color. It's very relaxing. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to do that. I really enjoyed this. Also, you know, it's pink and purples, which are my favorite colors anyway, so I'm ah, so happy. I still have to see a real water lily this year, though I haven't seen one yet. So you can see after I was done, I'm coming in with a damp brush and what I'm doing I'm just is I'm just touching on that very darkest edge there and just pulling it out a little bit so the white highlight is no longer white but just um, like tinted purple a little bit. And this is going to make it look a little bit more natural and not quite as contrasty because the colors are already very intense so I didn't want to... Um, I didn't want it to be that much of a contrast, but again, that's just taste. And then I'm grabbing my white pen again. If you have a white Sharpie, which are hard to come by in Germany, at least the water-based ones, um, just use your white Sharpie. I'm using a similar pen that I just grabbed from a from a um, discount, uh, nay, office store, I mean. And I'm just adding a little, uh, some white dots. And the good thing is because this is water-based, it's going to basically react with the color underneath and be tinted in the color underneath. So I'm just going to have very light green dots and very light purple dots when I'm done. So that is pretty, that is very pretty, at least to me. That was just a little bit of extra interest that I enjoyed. Here's a close-up of the card when I was um, done with it. You can see that I, that I still have that strong contrast where the darkest color is, but I'm blending very easily into the lightest color. And I sprayed it with a mix of Perfect Pearl and water to add some shimmer and shine to it as well. You just have to be careful not to use too much because it's a water-based coloration, so it's going to run if you use too much water. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, here are some more videos for you to check out. And please subscribe because I have more videos with tutorials coming up. Cheers!